So death certificates or documents that were related to death kind of go back a long, long time. You might say at times people didn't even know whether someone was dead and they got buried. And that really did happen. Think about the Black Death and the number of people who died during that time. You know, various countries did various things. France had um, a good system of documenting death. Uh, Italy started quarantining people, and gosh, we're doing it again. And England started tracking deaths. We created something in England called the Bills of Mortality. I'll show you a picture of it. The Bills of Mortality had names of people who died and where in London, for say, per, perhaps, they died. So you might want to avoid that part of town. <laughs> King James in the 1600s published deaths, honestly, from other causes besides the plague. And later there were more specific documents that were created. This is a picture of a bill of mortality. And in Latin at the very top, which you can't read that well, it says, remember, you have to die. It's kind of nasty, huh? Um, this is a, an image of what the actual list is of the people who died that were posted. So um, we don't do that anymore. Then later on in the 1800s, we had some more scientific approaches to death. Um, William Farr wondered if we knew what caused death, could we advance and extend life? And our first modern registration system began. There were only 139 ways to die in seven categories. <laughs> and, and France actually created the first death certificate. What we know as the ICD-9 system, which we use every single day, actually was created in 1893. And then after World War II, it officially began being used for billing. And you know how it's grown. It's part of our life. And the death certificate became, and many of you have a copy of it, just a one-page document. And it was filled with pen and paper. I don't know if any of you are on something called Ancestry.com. I am. And I can see death certificates that were done for my grandparents and my great-grandparents. And very similar to portions of our current death certificate today. So the first standard death certificate was produced in 1900, and boy, has it changed, and I'll be showing you that too. There are several places where the death information gets stored. The one that is most useful for you as a researcher or someone doing quality improvement is the National Vital Statistics System. So if you're wanting to get, I guess, the most current and accurate information, you're going to get it from them. But all of the information that you put on a death certificate is going to go to various places, including your state and local agencies. And that information is going to be used to plan, to look at trends, maybe to designate funds uh, for certain diseases. Um, so it's vital, honestly, that we do our best to complete a death certificate as accurately as we can. And as you know, COVID reared its ugly head. And in 2021, it became the third leading cause of death. And then it dropped in 2022 to the fourth leading cause of death. And COVID's caused a little bit of an issue with death certificates because there were death certificates filled out because uh, so many had to be filled out with COVID as the leading cause of death when it may not have been. I've got a couple slides on that to share with you. 
This slide is not meant to be used, but it's meant to show the chaos that ex exists in this country related to advanced practice registered nurses and all the different rules that impact your ability to complete a death certificate. So I took this wonderful um, spreadsheet and I made this. It's a little simpler. So if you look at the states, the um, fact that you may have full practice authority doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to complete a death certificate. So if you look at Colorado and Kansas, they have full practice authority, um, but they can't do it. And the yellow states have reduced authority in the center. Why in the center of the country? I really don't know. And then purple seems to be varied, and those are states with restricted APRN practice. The rest of those gray states have no restrictions on their ability to complete a death certificate. Now, that doesn't mean that you're doing it. There may be institutional reasons why, or your relationship with the, if you have a, a physician in your practice or the company you work for doesn't want nurse practitioners to complete a death certificate, or perhaps you don't want to complete a death certificate, but you may have the ability to completely do that yourself. Is anybody in here, um, do you have anything to change on my map that you know of? Have you been kind of keeping up with your ability to complete a death certificate? Or asked to do it, or your families wonder why you didn't do it, since you're the primary provider? No, that can come up, and honestly, if your families expect that you're the one who's going to complete that death certificate, and they tell the police officer or the medical examiner that you're their primary care provider, then the, the, the uh, funeral home may expect and be waiting on you to complete that form. And if there's penalties involved with a delay in completing it, it could impact you. So you may want to be perfectly clear with your patients that though you have the authority to do it, the name of the person who's going to be completing that death certificate is Dr. Such and Such. And make that pretty clear if you feel like your patients potentially are not in hospice and are in a critical situation, um, maybe have an out-of-hospital DNR, do not want to go to the hospital, let them know who the responsible person will be, and that will save everybody a lot of frustration. COVID did impact death certificates. Um, and when they were filled out incorrectly, it did impact tracking and surveillance. Um, it was important to really uh, try to get the best information about the patient who died to know whether COVID was really the cause of death. And probably you all have experienced the same thing that we have in Houston, that I'd say five weeks ago, we started to get calls from our assisted living facilities that people were becoming COVID positive. And it's been just increasing over the past few weeks with more calls from the community of people who are COVID positive. Though they're not ending up in the hospital generally, they're usually at home, but COVID's definitely becoming a bigger problem, at least for our population. So there were some new guidelines that were established about doing a death certificate when COVID's in the mix. So if you really think that COVID was the cause, you would put COVID down as the first on a line of four on the death certificate as the most immediate reason for death. And then there may be other situations that increase the likelihood of death that they had pneumonia or they had COPD. Then there may be people who uh, never were tested or were negative at the time. Maybe COVID then becomes the secondary cause of death on a death certificate, and something else becomes the primary cause. 